So let's solve a problem where we have to construct the frequency table for the data showing the daily wages of 30 laborers in a factory taking one class interval as 210 to 230 where 230 is not included. So to prepare the frequency table we have to decide the class, the class width and the number of classes. Here it is given that the class interval is from 210 to 230. This means that the class length is 230 minus 210 which is equal to 20. Now to find the range we have to subtract the lowest entry from the highest one. The least entry in this data is 210 while the largest entry is 350. Therefore the range is 350 minus 210 which is equal to 140. Next, the number of classes is given by range upon width and that is equal to 140 upon 20 which comes out to be 7. This means that there should be 7 classes in total. Now since the lowest entry is 210, we will take our first class starting from 210 and we are already given that this class is 210 to 230. Also, it is given that we have to exclude the upper limit 230. This means the group frequency distribution is of the exclusive type and so the limits are going to be continuous. Therefore, the next class should start with 230 and since the width is equal to 20, the upper limit of the second class is 230 plus 20 which is equal to 250. Hence, we have a second class as 230 to 250. And similarly, the next class will be 250 to 270. And so, we have seven classes in total with the last class being from 330 to 350. Next, to make the frequency distribution table, we'll count the frequency for every class using tally marks. Why don't you pause the video and do this yourself? And when you resume it, I'll show you the completed table so you can verify. Sounds cool? All right then, go ahead. Give it a shot. Are you done? Great. So here goes the complete frequency distribution. If yours matches with this one, then brilliant. If it doesn't, then maybe you've made a small counting mistake and you can rectify it right now. Moving on, we will now try to answer a few questions related to this frequency distribution. The first question is, what is the range? Now, we have already calculated the range and we know that it is equal to 140. So that answers our first question. Next, what is the class width? Again, we have already calculated it and it is equal to 20. And the third question is, which class has the maximum frequency? Now from the table, we can see that 9 is the maximum frequency and it corresponds to the class of 230 to 250. Then, we have to find the limits of the last class. Here the last class is from 330 to 350, so its upper limit is 350 and its lower limit is 330. So far, we saw a tabular form of organizing data and representing it. However, when we started off with this topic, we discussed how pictorial representation is always more appealing and attractive and how it is easy to remember and easier to analyze. So, if we represent statistical information in a pictorial form, it is easier for us to analyze it and make deductions for further studies. One such pictorial representation of data is by using a bar graph. Now, if we slightly modify the bar graph, we get another way of representing data which we will study now. Since we have studied group frequency distribution, we will look at how it is represented graphically. And one way to represent this group frequency distribution graphically is through something known as a histogram. Now in a nutshell, a histogram is a graphical representation of frequency distribution in the form of rectangles with the class intervals as the base and the height of the rectangles being proportional to the frequencies. Also, the most basic difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that in the case of a histogram, there is no gap between the rectangles. And you can see that when you look at the histogram we have right here. Now that we know what a histogram is, let's move on to drawing one. 
And for that, we'll consider the given data which shows the marks obtained by the students and try drawing a histogram to represent it. The first step is to draw the x-axis and the y-axis. We know that the class intervals are represented on the base, which is nothing but the x-axis. And therefore, on the x-axis, we will show the class intervals. But how do we show these intervals? Let's see. The given class intervals are from 0 to 10, from 10 to 20, and so on, till we have the last class, which is from 70 to 80. Now, to represent these intervals, we'll denote their class limits on the x-axis. Let's say we start by marking the value 10 at a distance of 2 centimeters from the origin. So 20 will be at 4 centimeters and so on. In other words, we can say that we have shown class limits at intervals of 2 centimeters each. And therefore, every 2 centimeter interval is equal to 10 marks or every 1 centimeter will be equal to 5. And so we say that we have taken a scale of 1 centimeter is equal to 5 marks on the x-axis. Now remember, this scale is always represented on the right-hand corner of the graph paper. Also, it is important to write the titles for both the axes. Here, the x-axis represents the marks scored by the students. And next, on the y-axis, we will represent the frequencies. Here, we can see that the maximum frequency is 22. And this means that the highest value that we need on the y-axis is 22. So let's take the scale on y-axis as 1 centimeter is equal to 2 students. And so on the y-axis, we will start from the origin and mark 2, 4, 6, and so on at intervals of 1 centimeter each till we reach 22. Now, whenever we are choosing the scale for our axis, we have to ensure that the graph is drawn in such a way that it covers maximum area of the graph paper while giving a neat and clean representation of the data that we have. And we'll write the scale on the y-axis as 1 centimeter is equal to 2 students, again, on the corner. Also, the title for y-axis is the frequency of the class intervals, which is essentially the number of students. With our axis and scale in place, Let's start drawing the histogram. We'll begin with the first class, which is 0 to 10. Now, the frequency for this class is 4, which means there are four students who have scored marks from 0 to 10. We'll draw a rectangle having its height as 4 with respect to the y-axis, and its base will be 2 cm interval between 0 and 10, corresponding to the class 0 to 10, right? Now, similarly, for the next class, which is from 10 to 20, the frequency is 10. And so, we'll draw a rectangle with its height as 10, while its base will be 2 cm interval between 10 and 20. Now, I really need you to observe that there is no gap between the rectangles here. Moving on, we can draw the rectangles for all other classes in the same way. And just like that, our histogram is ready. Drawing the histogram using the distribution table was pretty simple, right? Of course, it is important to know how to draw a histogram for a given set of data, but it is equally important to know how to interpret the data from a given histogram. Now, this is something we will learn in the next session. But until then, please make sure that you practice drawing a few more histograms just to get the hang of it. Until then, bye-bye. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.